in classroom conversations, I will be the mean teacher who asked the mean question. I will be saying things that many minority people receive on their daily life and ask white students for an explanation. For example, I'll be saying things like, okay, so tell me what you can say to me if I say this to you. Poor people in this country, they do it to themselves. They are poor because they are lazy. Don't you think that this is a pretty nice country? If you try, you have a chance of succeeding. Then students will give me explanation and they will give me clarification so that this sort of microaggressions examples or multiple examples will go on along classroom teaching, along our discussion. In terms of academic projects, I do in my advanced intercultural comp class where at the very beginning of the quarter when students are not exposed to whiteness studies, when they are not exposed to the journal articles, I would give them a set of questions. What do you think whiteness is? What do white people do? So that they have to come prepared thinking about those questions and they are in small groups recording their own conversations. So then they have the conversations, they record the conversation, they transcribe the conversations. So then students will be interested in finding out like, maybe how racist I am. Well, you said you were not, right? But <laughs> look at the discourse. So that I teach them techniques of discourse analysis, what is said plus what is unsaid. So then they can learn about how they have always lived their lives as an oppressor, maybe. I let students know up front at the very beginning quarter, at the very beginning of the quarter, that this is going to be a very uncomfortable experience. And especially for many of you, many of you who live in the privileged lives. However, in order to engage in that sort of discussion and conversation, we need to be able to hear other people's out. We need to be able to lower our gut and to say that I am wrong. I expect my students to be able to take responsibility whenever students say that, oh, that was my ancestor, it has nothing to do with me. I will have other students in the room that call out that action. So then in many things that we do and here in the classroom is supported by evidence, how do you derive at that conclusion? We also have theory-derived readings. Most of them are published and written by scholars of color. And what people say, they are published in the outlets that are not mainstream. For example, um, I have readings where scholars talk about how scholars of color are never accepted in academia. You are always expected to assimilate. Assimilate means act white. And you got to write topics that white people want to hear. So then by giving them all this example, it sort of give them, give them the invisible tool that it will never be the same situation that I'm going to face. But when I see this happening in an organizational policy, I think that many daily life examples I draw give them the motivation to say that if a tiny Asian woman like Dr. Lee can say that, you can do it.